I got home today to discover I'd gotten some packages. And we all love packages, especially from the Ebby. All right, so I know what these things are, so I'm going to start with the more exciting one. Now I know what this is, but I have no idea if it's in good condition. So I'm really worried that it won't work. So as you can see, I got myself a tape player, and it's not exactly a new tape player. This is a Toshiba KTS3. I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure it's from the 80s. This I bought largely because of what comes in it, but also because I just wanted a really good tape player I could carry around. It's definitely dirty. Um, it's beat to shit, but everything looks to be in fairly good condition, all things considered. It unfortunately is missing the battery door. That's my fault. I didn't look at the listing close enough before I ordered it. So I'm just going to have to do what we did back in the old days, which is put a piece of tape over that fucker. All right, so let's get some batteries in there and see if it will power up. I'm going to salvage those batteries out of my Panasonic because that one's not working so well. I mean, it plays, but the speaker sounds like shit. And the uh, belt's loose. I'm not sure where to get a replacement belt because I don't know what size it needs. So it kind of has trouble rewinding, and I think it has trouble maintaining speed as well. Oh, it also has a terrible 60 hertz hum, which is interesting because it's running off battery. Something interesting I've just noticed that might be, I don't know, it might be too subtle to see on the camera, but the plastic case is straight, 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 and then it bulges right here where the batteries are. Because these batteries are in there putting spring tension against this plastic and have been doing so for decades. So I, it's not just because the batteries are in there. I actually, when I had them out, I noticed the plastic was still bowed. So this case has actually been permanently deformed by use. Very poor design. This should have been a thicker piece of plastic to prevent that. Okay, I'm taking the tape it came with out, so I can show you that later. And for now, I'm just going to put a test tape in there. It's the Street Eaters. I just saw them on Saturday. They were great. Actually, you know what? I'm going to test it with the tape out first, see if it'll even spin the motor. And so far, no dice. Nothing. Not a damn thing. Oh, that might be why. Okay. Yep. All right, yeah, we got a, we got a dead belt. I can hear the motor running, but uh, nothing happens. So... Uh, this is not going to be capable of playing tapes until I take it apart and fix it. So that's a shame, but I have other tape players. However, I might have success with the other tape that came with it. This is not a tape at all. It's an FM radio. I'm not sure exactly what spurred the creation of these things, but they seem to have been pretty popular for a period in the 80s and maybe 90s. Toshiba had them, and I think Panasonic had them. And probably everyone had them. I think Sony had them. And basically what it is, is it's a complete self-contained FM radio, uh, except that I guess they couldn't build the radio into the main tape player without making the tape player bigger because the technology hadn't gotten small enough yet or something. I, I don't know. So consequently, this goes into the tape bay, but it doesn't do any hokey, like it doesn't have a, a record head that talks directly into the playhead. It's, it's not like a car tape adapter. It's got uh, pogo pins here, these little spring-loaded contacts which press against the matching ones in the tape player. So that's why when I flipped that switch earlier, this switches between radio and tape. So when it's on radio, it doesn't even try and run the uh, motor. Let's go ahead and drop this guy in here. Now you'll notice that although this here is the indicator for the tuning, you, you don't tune with this. You tune with this little wheel right here, which is why this door has a window in it. You may or may not have noticed that. And it's also why the door is completely transparent instead of just having a little window like a lot of other players. So you could actually get in there and change the tuning without having to open the thing up. It's also a stereo mono switch. Okay, that's on. And there is a mechanical lock that keeps it from coming out, which I'm guessing is because the tape door doesn't hold enough pressure against those pins. So if you're jogging or something, uh, they would tend to, to jitter and, and pop loose. Uh, so that makes sure it's mechanically held in there. And it is... That's pretty firm. Okay, it shows that it's working. Now this has no built-in speaker. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug it into my capture setup. By the way, cool thing, two headphone jacks. They're just called phones one and two. Probably just literally for two people to listen to the same tape. It was the 80s. Okay, I'm gonna put on my ugly gamer headphones so I can listen to this. Yeah, there we go. 
Black workhorses. Cindy is in Puyallup. Thank you for listening to 90. All right, so there you go. Uh, it's a pretty good sounding FM radio. I've got no complaints. Set that to one side. I want to open up this box. Let's see what I got here. This is much more unknown. <laughs> Thank you, and God bless. Please leave me five-star feedback. As you can probably see already, these are tapes, and who knows what they are, and hopefully they're good. So, there's going to be a bunch of crap in here, because this includes a whole bunch of pre-recorded tapes. So, for instance, the Metallica album, Kill Em All, yeah, I don't care, um, the Smiths. Um, but also a uh, glory and praise volume one. This is really what I'm here for Unlabeled tape Probably used probably something on it. No idea what okay. What is the best tape player to use for this? I guess probably the boom box, so I'll go get that it, uh, hmm. uh, Maybe I can put this back here My workbench is not very large Let's go ahead and put our first tape in. To be forewarned, for the rest of this video, I'm just going to be going through these tapes one after another. I found some interesting things on here, but it's nothing really earth shattering, so I don't mind if you bail. Oh, oops, that was fast forward. Well, I guess I'll flip it over. All right, let's get something on the outside. What else do we have here? Blank, blank, QP. Lots of motos revenge. Haven't heard of them. Maybe you have. Maybe they're a well-known metal band. That's my automatic assumption. I'm guessing this is all metal. That's just my automatic presumption. When I get a whole bunch of home recorded tapes, I'm like, it's either gonna be hymns or it's gonna be metal. Oh, there we go. That's what was interesting to me. I remember seeing this in the listing, DJ number nine, and there's a phone number, both a cell phone and a home phone number. Really curious what that is. This tape appears to be blank, so okay. Let's pop DJ number nine in. It's been played and not rewound. Yeah, these are mostly blank tapes that have been recorded on, so this is exactly what I was hoping for. My dream is to find recordings of like live DJ radio sets and other weird stuff like that that you just can't buy, you can't find for any price. I, I don't know what this is. There we go. I gotta check to see if there is music on here, whether it's copyrighted, like whether I can Shazam it or anything. Um, Cause if I can't, then I'll maybe just throw this stuff up raw on YouTube. You know, just let this sit here and, you know, rattle off an hour and a half of audio. <laughs> this sounds like it's just someone's, you know, crappy drum machine work. I don't know if there's more to it than that, but that's what it sounds like. Got those hand claps. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see what else we got. There we go.
All right, so it sounds like it's just a whole lot of that, which is okay. Um, maybe uh, maybe it ends up being more interesting later, or um, maybe it sounds better if I you know listen to it on a proper system. This is not a great tape player. Um, I've been looking for a good deck for a while, but I didn't have a lot of cassettes. Now I have a lot of cassettes, so it's worth it to bother getting a good deck. Just check and see if there's anything on the other side. Got that disco like Scissor Sisters baseline. All right, so that's definitely a, a cool tape. Um, it sounds like it might be really mediocre, but I'm gonna give it a better shot later. Just wanna get through this stuff. So here we have a audio brand 90 minute tape low noise high output type one normal position go 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 okay so it seems like there's nothing on here or at least not none of this oh i guess we're at the end of the tape okay if i wait long enough she told herself he might come back they both might I think they're out there, just around the corner, just around the point, searching for crabs like they used to. They'll come back in hand, tall Robert, smiling and handsome as ever, and little Mo, trying to keep up on his four-year-old legs and smiling, too, at the father he adored, and everything will be all right. She stood traitor, straighter and gazed out in her so slight, lonely figure. She looked to a metronome. And, cold, and somehow beyond recall. Well, that's interesting. Sunline, the friendly press of people. Something about this particular boombox uh, it has a automatic music select system. Who what, is she, I wonder? And I'm not sure what that's supposed to do. What I think it's supposed to do is when you hit fast forward and play at the same time, it's supposed to fast forward until it detects silence and then start playing so you can find the next song easily. But it looks like it's not working correctly, or maybe this uh, sp uh, spoken word is just messing it up. I'm going to check on the other side and see if there's anything different on there. And there isn't. Okay. So again, not uninteresting. That was exactly what I was hoping for. See, I like the idea of going and finding a batch of someone's tapes. I guess, I don't know, maybe some people would see it as privacy invasion, but I figure they threw them away. So if I found anything on here that was really bad, like if I found a recording of someone's breakup or something, I would not share it with people. But for the most part, you know, this is how archaeology works. You know, we go, we find people's journals, we find their diaries, we find their old family photos, and you know, we dig through them and we figure out what their lives were like. Oh, sorry, this is the one that says uh, Quasimodo's Revenge, uh, decapitated. This is metal. Ah, okay. I think this might be a recording of a live show. I'm not sure what that is. I can only find one reference online to any band called uh, Decapitated, and I kind of suspect that that's not what that means. I think that's either an album or a show or, or something. Oh, I'm sorry. Quasimodo's Revenge. I screwed up. I still don't think I'm going to find anything. I think this is someone's like garage band. I can't find anything for this, so I don't think this is a real band, as it were. So that's exciting. I'll... Probably get a full recording of that later. Papa Jazz, Columbia, South Carolina, where it was purchased. Okay, all right. I thought at first from the design that this was like some Wagner or something, but no, this is some band's crappy tape for booking or mail order call Swell. Swell Records. Never heard of them. Will this be the metal?
All right, so it's the other category of music. Uh, crappy metal or crappy dance music. And we got the other one. All right, so I'll set those aside. Oh, hey! A tape head cleaner. Let's see if it still works. Yeah, it looks like it works. Uh, I don't have any fluid to use with this, so I'll set that aside. Velociraptronic. Okay, sure. 602 area code. Did my tape player just seize? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, it was just the end of the song. You can't fucking trick me like that. Alright, so this is, again, the other genre, which is dance music. Hell yeah. Alright, that's about right. Yeah, so uh, we got the Smiths, we have uh, Nirvana's In Utero, Metallica Kill 'em All, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, Siamese Dream, Goa, Ambient, Techno, Techno, Break Beat, Creator, Flag of Hate, I think uh, Wu Tang Clan is down in there somewhere. With all this, it's really strange to find Glory and Praise Volume 1 a tape that would purport to be religious music. But you know what I notice? It's had the right protect put back on it. In a really gross way, they stuffed like some tissue in there and then put a piece of ancient ass tape over it. So anyway, um, this uh, got used as a blank. Well, the felt pad is screwed, but it might work. Okay, nothing on that side. Let's check the other. Nothing there either. Let's see. All right, so I don't know what the mystery with this one is. I'll have to figure that out another time. All right, so this also is, yeah, really out of character. This is some music from the 20s, it looks like. Let's see if that's what it says it is. Uh, sure is. Yep, yeah, okay. So maybe they never got around to using that one. Oh, that's weird. I've never seen this before. This design of case doesn't put this end of the tape down in, in the cassette holder. It's too narrow. You have to put the other end down. This must have been a really early design. Oh no, I see. They actually sell it. Fuji sells it as extra slim. So more likely this was a late design then. How much smaller is it? Oh wow, yeah. It's got a good um, eighth of an inch smaller. That would make a difference. If you had all extra slim cases, you could probably store a lot more. All right, so we've got Tool. Um, so that sort of dates this collection to a point. Another blank, another blank. Um, Capella, you got to know. Living German. Appears to actually be a German language cassette. We have another cleaning cassette. This is Old Tech. That's probably Old Tech now. Yeah, it is. I don't want to sound disparaging. Um, I'm not saying that this techno is not worth listening to because it might actually be really good. It's just, uh, you know, I know what it is, so I'm just going to spin it off at some point and listen to it. Oh, a metal tape. Oh, you don't see those very often. Oh, that's a nice looking tape. So I don't know what that is, but that sounds cool. There's our metal. See, I knew there'd be metal in here. Uh, Doids? Oh, Enya. <laughs> Klein, Gumby, Various. God, these are filthy. These tapes are super dirty.
I don't really know much about uh, metal or I mean that that wasn't metal. It was um what eighties punk or something like that. Like that. Oh no, this is punk. Why don't the club owners hire? Yeah, the germs enjoy. Anymore? Mm, we do get shows occasionally, but it is getting harder. I think there's a lot of bands now, and when we were first doing it, there weren't that many bands, and a lot of the new bands are just more cooperative as far as doing a sedate, safe stage show. There's no threat of um, an imminent riot. <laughs> This is probably something really, really well known, and you're mocking me for not knowing it, but, uh, alright. Here's the thing, though, like, overall, it's a good haul. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Just a whole bunch of weird shit I can't identify. Hell yeah. It's another, like, this tape felt really good, really solid. It doesn't say metal, but uh, it just feels like a really well-made tape. More tech now. This sounds pretty chill, though. Take that up and give that to my girlfriend. She'll like that. More tech now. Yeah, okay. All right, finally, what we got here on the swell tape. All right, I'm just showing you all this because I thought you might like to, you know, sort of have a ride along while I uh, discover the contents of a total mystery box, you know? I don't know. I, I figured that might be entertaining for somebody, so hope you're having a good time. Jungle! Oh. Yep, it sure is. Boy, howdy, is this ever not my genre. Okay, that's a better beat. I guess that was a song by the band Hole. So I don't know what that is. Um, actually, you know what? Before I give up, I'm going to check and see if that was a radio recording. Alright, so that was also a whole song, so that's probably just an album rip. It's actually classical music. No, it seems to legitimately just be some classical music. Well, there's some techno, though. Man... man. Can you pronounce that? M man to am? Hi, hi Gibbs. Gibbs, you're not helping. Gibbs, I do not need you here. Oh, Gibbs, you're filthy. Look at you. You've got dirt all over you. <sighs> he has been trying to get on my lap for the last two hours. And he finally got what he wanted. Alright, Gibbs. I love you, but it's time to go. You're so difficult. Alright, uh, what haven't we touched yet? Oh. I've been curious about side two. It just says side two. Side one. Okay. It's probably a CD or an LP rip. Yep. It's just called Music for Listening, Music for the Soul. The sound level meter is just completely pegged. Okay, so if that's Music for the Soul, what's Music for Listening? Alright, that's fair. 
I googled music for listening music for the soul and I didn't get any results so I don't know what it is but stigma ripped More techno. Okay. So yeah, uh, that was pretty much exactly what I hoped for. I couldn't really ask for more. I ordered a box of random tapes off the internet, and I got a whole bunch of someone's actual personal collection. Not just a crap load of... Gibbs! He's making a mess of my room still, and he won't... he won't respect me. Anyway, at least this collection wasn't just a whole bunch of pre-recorded commercial tapes. I got something that's real, that actually represents a life that someone had. Uh, I'd call this a win, and I think I only paid like 20, 30 bucks for it, so uh, I think I came out on top in, in lots of ways. Since he's not gonna let me record any more video anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you had a good time.